perhaps we have a little time to take a question. I see uh, three, three hands. Uh, so, madame, you were the first, please. Ilona Antonishan from uh, Poland, but uh, I'm working for Volkswagen, and you were commenting on the electric cars policies around the world, which is actually concerning me for the last three years, day and night. Um, I wouldn't be so hard on IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. Actually, I think it is a stroke of genius because it increased the speed of investment in electric car technologies, and these are gigafactory size um, in, um, investments each time, which is five billion dollar every one of them. So it is making a huge change because the big producers now started to invest quickly. You made the rush, which is actually following the rush from China. So the Chinese have a very stable support mechanism for electric car production, and they have made a great industry out of it. So right now, IRA made it possible to make this kind of support, so actually following China. Um, in, and in high speed in America, which made following by Canada, which made following by Europe. And right now, Europe changed so much the rules that I'm right now, were, I were able to work with the Polish government to establish in high speed, great, really great location um, parameters for gigafactories, and we established one, and we are looking for others. So I think don't be so hard on the IRA. I think it was a good one. Marcus, do you have a response or comment? Well, as an American speaking before an international audience, I have an obligation to be more Catholic than the Pope. Um, so uh, I, 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 I'm very glad that you find IRA to be such a stimulus <laughs> to uh, important policies around the world. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, I know you're an American citizen. You don't have to be more Catholic than the Pope. <laughs> well, I was, uh, <laughs> I must say, I've been struck by two things recently with regard to electric vehicles. And I guess I should say it's a, 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 a being clear, I, I own one. But uh, I was struck in China how how common they have become, how rapidly. You can tell because the, the uh, uh, electric and hybrid vehicles have a different color license plate than others. And I was, I was astonished at how common they, ha they have become. Uh, I, given the, uh, uh, it wasn't obvious that the, uh, how developed the underlying infrastructure is, and we know that China uh, is uh, on a very uh, rapid process of building new electric plants that uh, uh, actually are not necessarily low, low uh, emission. In the States, in contrast, as you probably have read, after an initial spurt of, uh, of demand for electric vehicles, they seem to be slowing down. And uh, it's not, although it's the IRA uh, contemplates some subsidies to things like charging, charging stations. Uh, I suppose it's not immediately obvious that the uh, consumer acceptance is going to be so rapid uh, without also sustained and substantial consumer subsidies. So I think this, this, the future here remains a, a, bit, a, a bit uncertain. That, uh, okay. I'll Thank you. Thank you very much, John. I had uh, other questions over there. Could you get a, a mic? Yeah. Jean Alolois from the Pays France. Thank you to all panelists for your insightful deep dive into economic outlooks this morning. Um, I find you discuss a lot about um, security, risk management. My question to you is, what is the good news 
What do you see upside in the current situation for whom and where? I'm not sure that I got exactly the question. Who, who could respond? Uh, Gabriel? If, if the question was where is the good news, uh, I think there, there is good news. Uh, uh, um, one is that uh, we are not uh, seeing deglobalization as was uh, as was feared by many uh, when the U.S.-China trade war broke out uh, and with all this crisis hitting, we see we see globalization as the economist put it. I think that's clear, but the global system, the trade system, has actually been relatively resilient. No, uh, the other piece of good news is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about financial risks not yet fully materialized, mm -hmm. but um, what we can say is that the, this first uh, 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 appearance of, uh, of bank crisis, uh, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank and, and, and these sort of things, uh, have, have, be, uh, have been very, very well managed and contained, uh, and there hasn't been any, any uh, diffusion of those risks uh, yet. I'm not sure whether we've seen the end of it, but that is good news as well. And the third piece of good news uh, is that uh, uh, the subsidy race that the IRA uh, is part of it, you know, that economists feel uncomfortable with, happens in the right area. Because what we do need is you know, more investment in, uh, in renewables, uh, in electric vehicles, etc. And there, a subsidy race is, is beneficial. You know? uh, if it was in, in, in steel or in, um, I don't know, in old-fashioned mm. industries, something different. But, but because we are facing a, a global common good here, or a bad, actually, the climate change that needs to be fought, this investment race is something that's positive. And so <laughs> that's three elements of, 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 of uh, more positive news, I guess. Well, yeah. <coughs> thank you very much. We are not only uh, with bad news, but also good news. G Gabriel is eloquent on that. Let me say, Gabriel, that I'm not sure that we will be always as satisfied with the behavior of the non-banks. For the banks, uh, the reaction has been very effective. And, uh, and uh, in Europe, for instance, we had applied by the rule of, of the Basel uh, uh, Committee and so forth and the G20. And so, so uh, we, we were reasonably protected until now, as you said, you, you remain prudent. But on the non-banks area, as you say, we don't have seen all the consequences of the higher rates. May, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, Perhaps just please, uh, Sebastian. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, I think the, the good, from an economic point of view, the good news is also that so far, despite the immense uh, uh, political tensions, uh, uh, political shocks, the world economy has been pretty resilient. Uh, and uh, uh, given the shock uh, it, it went through, uh, it's true about uh, the economic consequences of the COVID pandemics, about uh, the, the economic con consequences of uh, war in Ukraine uh, as well. Uh, so there has been economic cause, but not that much compared to the, the gravity of the, uh, of the crisis. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's good to um, uh, emphasize uh, 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 to emphasize that uh, COVID, the COVID crisis was a moment where uh, vulnerabilities were uh, became more visible uh, for the, the general the pub, for the public. But I think uh, that was actually a moment when uh, these uh, international value chains proved their resilience more than their, their vulnerabilities be because within months, weeks in some cases, uh, uh, um, economic activity rebounded. Thank you very much indeed. I I'm turning to our founder. Uh, it is 10 o'clock. Shall I consider that we went through all what we had to examine or have you got, have we got a little time more? No? <laughs> so, so I understand that uh, I have to thank all the panel, <laughs> panelists, they were remarkable. <laughs>